Hello, good crowd. We are so fortunate today. We have with us Mark Blumenthal. He's the executive director of the Social Ventures Foundation. He's doing uh, really innovative things in Haiti as a model for how we can expand uh, innovative finance for social ventures around the world. So stick around. You don't want to miss this episode. Welcome to the Your Mark on the World show with your champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. Our sponsor, Johnson & Johnson, matches most individual donations up to $250 at caringcrowd.org. Mark, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks, Devin. It's, we're thrilled to have you. Thank you for taking the time to be here. Why don't we start just to, uh, with what you're doing with, uh, I think you call it VICE, the, uh, the vitamin ice that you're selling in Haiti. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, VICE is basically a, uh, a model for meeting an unmet challenge in the poverty reduction space. So as executive director of the Social Ventures Foundation, uh, I decided we had to put rubber to the road in connection with how do we really put together and implement a business model that really is focused on the base or the bottom of the pyramid. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, we decided that the best place to experiment with this business model was the poorest nation in the Americas, which is Haiti. Uh, it's also, by the way, one of the roughest places to do business in the world. So bottom line is that if we can be successful there, we think we can be successful in any developing nation. Um, so VICE itself was uh, put together because uh, one of the unmet challenges in the poverty reduction space is uh, vitamin deficiency and uh, protein deficiency in the populations, simply because most of these folks only eat a meal or a meal and a half a day. So uh, the question and the challenge for us is, how do you create a business model that employs the poor to deliver social impact for the poor at the bottom of the pyramid? And I should say that for the folks that deal with Excels, uh, this has been the most challenging Excel I've ever been through, um, simply because you're dealing with pennies. You have to price a product at a price the poor can afford, and at the same time, employ the poor to deliver that product. Uh, put that all together into a business model, and voila, this is what uh, we're focused on in Haiti. It, it, it is a remarkable uh, process. What are some of the things you've learned from engaging in this process? Well, <laughs> quite a few things. Uh, first of all, the, <laughs> how to drive uh, in Haiti is <laughs> the most challenging thing. Uh, I, I think really the, the biggest problem has been uh, navigating uh, what I'll call the, uh, the, the political and uh, um, political waters of, of Haiti, really. Uh, there's just a lot of issues that Haiti has as a nation. Obviously, I think everyone knows that they went through uh, an earthquake and a hurricane. This has really decimated uh, a lot of infrastructure. But at the same time, they're also undergoing uh, a problem with uh, their political system. Uh, based upon a, a major uh, theft that occurred uh, in connection with Venezuela oil money. And as a result, the population is very unhappy about it. Uh, but nevertheless, we have persevered through a number of, shall we say, um, civil disobedience uh, issues, and we continue to, um, uh, to uh, really grow our, our, our program there. Now, I think you've got a new innovation, a new product that you're working on, the V-Bar. Tell us a little bit about that. Right. So first of all, the vice, vice itself is a shaved ice comb, by the way, with a vitamized topping. Uh, so that's a very inexpensive product that, uh, that can be uh, you know, sold at a reasonable price. And in fact, uh, in Haiti, we're selling it for between 10 and 15 cents or 10 or 15 gourd. Uh, again, inflation has driven the uh, devalue of that currency quite a bit. The V-Bar is a protein bar, and we make that with locally sourced ingredients, including cornflakes that are made in Haiti and peanut butter that we make ourselves. And we combine that and that's basically a protein bar. So the combination of, uh, of a vice shaved ice cone, the topping, uh, and uh, a V-bar really does help to very much supplement the vitamin deficiency needs of the population. And I might add that the vice itself, the formulation, has been uh, helped by uh, one of our sponsors, Griffith Food International. But at the same time, uh, we have taken pains to make sure that the flavors meet the, um, the uh, taste buds of the local Haitian population. Uh, and uh, without question, uh, they do. Oh, that's great. Now, I, you're also working to set up a fund as a B Corp where you can 
make more investments in new enterprises like this at, at greater scale. Tell us more about your plans and efforts there. Well, that's called the End Poverty Fund, and that's under formation. Um, essentially, the End Poverty Fund is, is really focused on uh, investing in uh, uh, similar types of endeavors, such as VICE. Uh, the problem is that um, we have a real uh, funding problem with uh, any of the businesses that are m looking to make it at the bottom of the pyramid. Uh, investors tend to be risk averse. They're looking to really make their investments um, based upon return on investment. Uh, the number of investment funds that are really focused on in, um, and have the patience to focus on the bottom of the pyramid are, are really uh, a handful. Uh, and in order to really uh, get more money into this space, we really do need to engage the global public. We cannot rely on these closed-end funds. And as a result, uh, the End Poverty Fund is, is really a unique model uh, that will be uh, looking to eventually go public. It's basically based on a Berkshire Hathaway model, and it's something, again, that's under development. But um, I, I should point out here that as VICE scales, uh, we plan on rolling it into the End Poverty Fund and finding like other types of businesses to roll into the fund and then eventually go public with it. But again, I want to uh, stress here that this fund is under development. And uh, we certainly are looking to get partners for it and, um, you know, uh, and build it. Uh, but I, I essentially we're looking to get this thing rolling next year. Yeah, well, that's great. As you uh, think about, um, you look at what you're doing with the VICE and the V-Bar, uh, give us a sense of the scale in your plans for those products. Well, essentially our business model um, uh, is based upon a, a concept called micro-franchising. Um, and let me explain that a little bit if I may. Uh, the realities of the marketplace for the poor is that the major employment for the poor is not employment. It's self-employment. And the poor literally have to make up their own jobs. Uh, there's just no employers for them to speak of, especially in Haiti, uh, which is really having uh, serious uh, unemployment problems. So when you look at the, the realities of the marketplace, uh, the best way to deal with this is through this model called micro-franchising. Now, obviously, I think you're all aware of uh, microcredit, um, obviously pioneered by a gentleman named Muhammad Yunus, uh, who I've met and, and volunteered for for a while. Um, but unfortunately, microcredit leaves it up to the entrepreneur to come up with their own ideas for a business. And as a result, you have a ton of little retail stands or folks owing sewing machines, essentially the very similar types of enterprises. This helps people to get a cash flow, but it really doesn't help to lift their livelihoods out of poverty. Um, the difference here is that we're looking at prepackaged business that has a proven business model that we can then engage the poor in as a, a micro franchisee. And the bottom line here is that their success is our success. So we want to handhold and make them successful. Uh, this is real key to a, to a micro franchising approach. Uh, how many micro franchisees do you have signed up at this point? Well, we, we just started scaling. So uh, believe it or not, uh, this business was just rolled out in December. We cracked our office then. And uh, we've had to uh, navigate the Haitian environment, per se. Uh, we've opened an office. We've started making ice. And we uh, uh, designed and developed a three-wheel uh, recumbent bicycle, which we call a bike, which we're building in Haiti. This is a transport vehicle for our micro franchisees to, number one, sell vice on the road and be able to go quickly from one point to another. They navigate those roads based upon where uh, obviously the, the populations are from a school to a workplace to let's say a shopping area. So that's really key. And of course that vehicle is green, does not require any gasoline, which by the way is, is in short supply in Haiti. Um, the, the nature of this vehicle therefore uh, gets us uh, to these locations. Um, that is a micro franchise in and of itself. But at the same time, we're also building micro franchises uh, as standalone uh, entities in schools and as well as housing projects. So for example, in a school, we're, we're just uh, looking at and examining the school marketplace. And our intent there is to set up what we call a vice box, which again is another product that we've designed that is being engineered and built in Haiti, uh, which essentially takes the shaved ice or, or ice blocks uh, and uh, refrigerates them. In other words, uh, we have insulation that, is, that we actually get from styrofoam from the streets of Haiti. 
that we recycle that styrofoam, we make it into uh, uh, insulated uh, sheets, and then those sheets are put in between uh, our uh, sheet metal that make up the box. But when the ice melts, we capture it in a bladder so that uh, we can uh, not only have uh, ice for refrigeration, but we also have clean water that we can distribute. Um, I should point out also that there is a like, uh, that this product is not foreign to uh, the Haitians. They have a product called Fresco, uh, which you can find in the streets of Haiti. The problem with Fresco is that the ice is not clean and the vitamized toppings are homemade and not healthy. Um, so here again, uh, our approach is to, to uh, number one, employ the poor in Haiti to, to deliver our product, but also to make any related products uh, related to the business in Haiti itself so we can employ more people in manufacturing. Very cool. Very cool. Um, as you reflect on what you've accomplished here, what are you most proud of? I, I think it, uh, I'm most proud of the fact that we've made a, a lot of progress in just six months uh, or maybe seven months in terms of what we've done. Um, everyone I talked to was just amazed how, how far we've gotten. We, currently, we are, are going to be scaling uh, to around 30 micro franchisees this fall. Uh, we did our um, proof of concept uh, and we actually had two bikes operating. Uh, we, we still have them operating, selling bikes. So we, we know pretty much what uh, the marketplace uh, will bear. Uh, how many vice cones will sell a day and V-bars. Um, and with that knowledge, of course, now we're ready to scale. So we'll be uh, looking to place an additional uh, eight bikes on the road this fall and uh, upwards of 30 micro franchisees uh, or more in total, uh, again, this fall in the combination of riding the bikes in schools and in housing projects. And I should point out the housing project is interesting because as well as the schools, uh, but the housing project, we want to be able to employ uh, or provide jobs for uh, poor mothers with families. Uh, and what we'll be doing is taking a vice box, putting it in a house that's strategically located. That woman will then be able to have her kids at home, but she'll be able to take that box out from the house, put it on the street, sell vice, which we, by the way, deliver uh, the ice and shaved ice right to her doorstep. And then, uh, and then bring that back in for safety purposes. Um, this provides her with another source of income. Um, so that, that's a win-win. At the schools, we're looking to actually train kids to sell vice. So this becomes another school topic, uh, another school course, that is, in business. And uh, that we'll teach them customer service and so forth. And they, of course, will be serving uh, their peers with a, a, a wholesome product that the kids need. Yeah, fascinating. Now, uh, Mark, as you reflect on the lessons you've learned, we talked a little bit about this earlier, but what do you think the most critical lesson is that applies to most social entrepreneurs? I would say persistence. Um, you know, you, you, there was just, I'm a sailor and uh, I kind of use a metaphor here that, um, you know, that you really have to be able to navigate the seas. You have to be able to change course quickly, um, you know, rig your sails according to the, the weather conditions, the currents and so forth. And I, I think if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you've got to be able to, to, to pivot from one foot to the other very quickly in, in, in context of what, you know, the many myriad of, of issues you're going to be facing. Uh, you know, whether it be a breakdown of a, in our case, of a bike, uh, or some issues dealing with um, uh, sourcing uh, peanut butter because the peanuts are in short supply, um, or, you know, uh, 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 the fact that you don't get electricity all the time in Haiti. Uh, these are the issues that you face. Uh, and you've got to be able to navigate and keep, keep going, stay the course. I think this is the real key thing to uh, success in entrepreneurship. Yeah, fantastic. Now, Mark, how did you get into this? What brought you to social entrepreneurship and social ventures foundation? Well, I started out uh, uh, as an entrepreneur uh, I, at uh, University of Pennsylvania. I um, participated in a startup uh, as freshman year, made a lot of money uh, freshman sophomore year, traveled the world on a Volkswagen camper bus my junior year, uh, saw a lot of poverty, came back, got a teaching certification, and uh, upon graduation, uh, started a uh, educational nonprofit that uh, focused on uh, providing uh, schools with innovative educational programs. Um, I then went back into business, got involved in a series of startups in the areas of medical devices, plasma fusion, um, satellite communication, among others. Uh, and I, I love the challenge associated with each of those. But uh, during the course of my travels, I, I, I witnessed a hell of a lot of poverty. And I never could figure out why the heck we have poverty on the planet. You know, these are people that if we were to engage them in the free enterprise system, all ships would rise. 
Uh, and unfortunately, uh, we just don't. Um, I, uh, if I may, I point out an example here. When I was in Venezuela, before Chavez came into power, I witnessed a, a, just a, a tremendous amount of poverty. And uh, I went and had a meeting with uh, business people in Caracas, the capital. And I, I shared with them my, uh, you know, my observations. I, I said, hey, why do you guys, are, why aren't you engaged in helping uh, to end poverty in your country? If you could engage the poor into the free enterprise system, everybody's going to do better. You're going to have more consumers, you're going to do better. And they kind of looked at me and said, well, no, no, that, that's the role of government. Government's in charge of poverty reduction. And I looked at them and I said, well, you know, I mean, that's one way to look at it, but really business should be really in the, the uh, you know, taking the lead here. But they shook their heads, no. And I stepped back and I watched as Chavez came into power by trading handouts for votes. And now the fact is, Devin, that business is out of business in Venezuela. And the business community, in my humble opinion, needs to really examine how they can be engaged in this area of lifting the livelihoods of the poor. Because if they don't, you know what the problems are. I mean, in Venezuela, the, the cost, and here in the United States too, the cost of poverty really does impact everyone. It creates a lot of, lot of problems, including crime, healthcare problems, and of course, human suffering. Yeah, I interesting take. Thank you for sharing that. Now, Mark, what is your superpower? Oh, well, I think I, I alluded to that before. I think it's being a blue water sailor. Um, I, I think, you know, the fact that it, um, I had a, a, a stint of tra traveling quite a bit on sailboat and dealing in uh, very challenging conditions has enabled me to, to be able to navigate the waters of a place like Haiti. Uh, it is very challenging there. Uh, you, you just can't be faint of heart. You've got to really use your passion and move forward and, and get things built, set up and, and going. And, uh, I couldn't have done that, I think, without having the experience I've had as a blue water sailor dealing with all sorts of uh, sea types of conditions. Yeah. Well, Mark, I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. I know you're busy, but before you go, would you take just a minute and tell people how they can learn more about Social Ventures Foundation and how they can connect with you personally? Sure. So my email address is mark, M-A-R-C, at socialventuresfoundation.org. Feel free to email me. Uh, more happy to, 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 to connect with anybody there that's interested in what we're doing. Um, the uh, URL for the Social Ventures Foundation is just that, socialventures, with an S, foundation.org. So please feel free to jump on and look at our website. Uh, and uh, again, I think uh, you'll find um, uh, the fact that we are really looking to change the paradigm of poverty reduction. Uh, and, and we were looking to engage the business community in this effort uh, to be something that we hope a lot of folks will respond positively to. Oh, fantastic. Again, Mark, thank you very much for joining us. We with you, wish you every success in your effort to eliminate poverty. Well, thank you, Devin. I really appreciate the opportunity here for this interview. All righty. Let's do thank some good. Thank you. A Caring Crowd, we believe everyone has the power to make a difference. Through our crowdfunding platform for community health, we empower passionate people to drive real change. Whether you work for a nonprofit organization, volunteer, or want to get involved for the first time, you can post a campaign on Caring Crowd. Join us, because caring is where change begins. Thanks for tuning in to the Your Mark on the World Show, the Social Impact Podcast. Please subscribe via YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or Spotify. Mm -hmm.